Hey guys, Absolute Zero here, and today we're going to be talking about inheritance in Java, and a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about applies to really any object-oriented programming. Of course, some of the concepts will be a little bit different, and of course, maybe some of the keywords, but for the most part, it's going to be the same concept. So what is inheritance? So this is the definition the Java tutorials give us. So this is the official, you know, Java tutorials. So definitions, a class that is derived from another class is called a subclass. And then it just goes on to list different names that we give to subclasses. And the class from which the subclass is derived is called the superclass. So that comes from the Java tutorials. And then the next thing that we have to know is that every class has one and only one direct superclass. So no matter what, every class always has at least, well, it can only have one class that's, that it's extended from, and it has to have one class that it's extended from. So you may be asking me, how can this be so? Because up to this point, we haven't had any, well, obvious inheritance in our programs. Well, that's because every class is a subclass of objects. Maybe not a direct subclass, but object is at the top of the inheritance tree, no matter what. So every single class in Java, so we define a class, it has all the properties of an object, no matter what. So you get the hash code, stuff like that. So you always, always, always have the functionality of an, ob functionality of an object, and we'll talk more about that later. So a subclass inherits the properties of its superclass. So obviously, you know, you get all the public methods and public fields. So we'll talk more about that later. So that's just a quick run through. Um, some key terms to keep in mind. Um, superclass, the class that is being extended. And I will be demonstrating that in a minute. The subclass, the class that is doing the extending. Um, members, all methods, fields, so instance variables, like I said earlier, and nested classes. Um, don't worry too much about nested classes for now. We're going to be talking about them in a future tutorial at some point, most likely. So don't worry about them for now. There's good to know that they're members. So a non-member is a constructor. So constructors are not members, so they're not inherited. So and then super, this is just a way that you can invoke the super version of a method. And we're not going to talk too much about that in this tutorial, but it's good to know it's there. And there's actually a specific way of using it. So just keep that in mind that it's there. So what inheritance looks like or how you should be thinking about it. So this is just a chart. Again, I pulled it off of the Java tutorials. So object is always, always, always the first class in an in inheritance tree. So it's always up here at the top. Everything is a subclass of object. And that's important to keep in mind because later we're going to be talking about something called polymorphism. Polymorphism. And it's really important that you know that. So this is kind of what it looks like. So all these classes here have the functionality of object. So now whatever this class is right here, all these classes down below it have the functionality of this class and the object class. So you guys will see that later, but so this contains basically everything an object has. Let's say it's a dog. Now this class right here contains all the methods and everything a dog has as well as object. So only public and protected members are inherited. Now we haven't talked too much about protected members, but that's not a big deal. Just know they are inherited and private members are not inherited. So you can't, let's say we declare a method or a variable private. If we extend that class, the subclass doesn't get those methods or variables. So that's something important to keep in mind. Why would we use inheritance? It lets you reuse your code. Inheritance is a lazy man's best friend. It will save you tons and tons of typing. So that's good. It's much easier to maintain your code. So one of the benefits of inheritance is we could have a top level class. You guys will see this in a minute that has something like play sound. And then if we decide that we have to change the way play sound works, 
we only have to change it in this one top level class versus going through maybe the hundred or so classes. I know that's a bit of an exaggeration. You're probably never going to have something that has a hundred classes extending it, but whatever. Um, instead of having to go through each and every one of those other classes to change it, if you're using inheritance, you only need to change it in one place. And it also does make your code a lot easier to debug because again, you only have to look to one place where you could possibly have a problem with your code versus looking in every single class to make sure, you know, the method is correct in each one and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier for that. It's also a very logical way to program. It helps you actually build a replica replica of the real world. So when you're programming an object oriented programming, you can really think about your program the same way you would think about how objects would interact in the real world. So in later tutorials, you'll definitely see that for now. Again, we're just talking about a lot of theory. So it allows you to use something called polymorphism, and that's something very powerful in object-oriented programming. And we're going to be talking a lot more about that in future tutorials because it is such an important thing to know how to do. So an inheritance example, this comes from Head First Java. So let's say we have this top level class right here, Animal. So let's say we're making a park simulator, <coughs> excuse me, with a bunch of animals roaming around going about their business. So every single animal is going to have a picture variable, um, you know, food, so what kind of food they eat, hunger, so if they're hungry, boundaries, where they're allowed to walk, and location, so where they are right now. And they're all going to have the methods make noise, eat, sleep, and roam. So these are all the animals we want to have in our park. So what we can do is we can have these animals all extend animal. And then what we can do, since it's inheriting all the functionality we need for a basic animal, we only have to add specific methods and variables for each animal. So like a lion and a tiger and a wolf would have things like hunt method. So they would hunt stuff and a cat would have like eat tuna or something like that. That was a bad example. Maybe like um, scratch the couch or something like that. Just off the top of my head so we can add different methods to make the more specialized versions of animal. So inheritance at work. So let's say, again, we have the public class animal. So it automatically extends object. So we get all the functionality of an object. And we have the public boy do animal stuff, and it you do animal stuff. Pretty simple. Now we have a dog class that extends animal. And I didn't highlight this, but I probably should have. But extends is the keyword you use to extend a superclass. So it extends animal. So we have a method, public boy do dog stuff. So now we can do dog stuff. But we can also call on the do animal stuff method from the animal class. So obviously a dog is an animal, so we can do animal stuff. And we also want it to be able to do specific dog tasks, like fetching a bone or something like that. Now, here's where things get a little bit different. So now we have the public class animal again, but we have a private int wait. So now if we come back here and we have public class dog extends animal and then we try to set wait equal to 28, it won't compile because private members such as variables and methods aren't inherited by the subclass. But let's say we go back here oops, and I just use arrow keys. Anyways, let's say this was a public int. Well, this would compile because it inherits the wait method. But another way to work around this is if we come back to our animal class and we add a set wait method for the wait variable. So basically what that means is now we can call the set wait method. And it's kind of like the dog class has the wait variable itself, but we can only change it using the set wait method now. So, uh, no, I'll talk about that later, but in a future video, but there's a way that you can think about this that makes it really clear. So when to use inheritance. So you want to use inheritance when you can say A, so class A is B. So class A is a class B. So an example would be a car is a vehicle. So, yep, that makes sense. Go ahead and use inheritance. 
a cat is an animal? Yep, go for it. So you see how when we say these things, cat is an animal, that makes sense. Now, what about a car is a wheel? No, that doesn't really make any sense. But a car has a wheel. It has a has a relationship. So what we would do in the case of a has a relationship, instead of using inheritance, we would just simply give the car class an instance of wheel. So we'd basically give it a wheel variable. An animal is a rabbit. No, that's backwards. So uh, the is a relationship doesn't really work both ways. So a rabbit is an animal, but an animal isn't a rabbit. That doesn't make sense. So that's when to use inheritance, but do not use inheritance when you just want to reuse code. You know, inheritance is there to help us be lazy, but not too lazy. So an example would be, let's say you have a piano that extends alarm. That doesn't really make sense. Piano is an alarm. Well, maybe for some people, but not in my house. So just to, you know, reuse the make sound method. That's no, you wouldn't want to do something like that. You'd want to give piano its own version of make sound. So, again, you don't want to use inheritance if there's no is a relationship. So, that was a really quick rundown of it, some of the theory behind inheritance. So, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping into Eclipse. And we're going to make some use of this new tool we have. So, I'm going to show you how it can help you be lazy, more efficient, and how it can help you be a better Java programmer. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, as always, stay frosty and I hope you guys all have a great day.